What is EAA? Electronically assisted astronomy is where you substitute an electronic device for the eyepiece on a telescope. There are several approaches, including using a night vision image intensifier or a small screen attached to the eyepiece location. For the purpose of today's discussion, I'm going to focus on the method most used for star parties. Here, you attach a video camera where the eyepiece would normally be positioned and send images to a PC. Software on the PC processes, stacks, and optimizes the image, which you can then project via video cable to a TV so a larger group can see it all at once. I have done dozens of EAA events for groups ranging from a handful of guests to over 500 and wanted to share my experiences and tips with you today. What are some of the advantages of EAA for star parties? Everyone can see at once. Rather than having a long line of people waiting for a turn, everyone can view the object comfortably. It's great for the disabled, the very young and the elderly. In the old days, I'd have toddlers roughly grabbing the eyepiece and moving the object out of the field of view. Some people couldn't align their eyes with the eyepiece and didn't see anything. Those with handicaps struggled to reach the eyepiece. With EAA, all can view comfortably. It's in focus for everybody. At the eyepiece, some people need to remove their glasses and compensate with a focus adjustment. Then you have to readjust again for the next person. This problem disappears with EAA. You get a better image. Would you rather see this or this? Light integration with stacking and software adjustments brings out colors in nebula and galaxies, as well as dust lanes and filamentary nebula structures. Objects that are faint smudges at the eyepiece come alive in EAA with dramatic detail. You get a color image if using a color camera. Because everyone can see it at the same time, you can show more objects in the same period of time. And finally, if you have a Wi-Fi connection, you can live stream to an unlimited audience. What about disadvantages? Well, it's more expensive than visual. You need to have a camera, cabling, laptop, and TV. It's more complicated to set up and requires AC power for your television. It's also harder to change magnification so it's not great for tiny objects like planets and globulars and binary stars. This normally requires a camera and or a focal reducer or Barlow change. It can be done, but unless there's a special event or planet near opposition, I usually avoid trying to do that during live events because of all the time it takes to change the setup and refocus. What do you need to get started in EAA? Well, you have to have a telescope. I recommend F7 or faster focal ratio. This is a good time to use your focal reducer if you have one to reduce the F ratio and make things faster. I usually use a Celestron 9.25 Schmidt Cassegrain with Hyperstar at F2.2, but I also get great results using an Esprit F5.5 100ED, a Tech 140, and a Tech 160 refractor. With the refractors, I often use a Apex L 0.65X focal reducer. Perhaps the best starter scope for EAA is a F5 to 7, 70 to 100 millimeter refractor. Newtonians are not recommended unless you can put them on a motorized mount. You need a mount. A go-to mount is preferred to minimize the time required to change targets. It can be alt-as or equatorial. You need an astronomy camera. This is generally not the time for narrow band cameras. With a live crowd, there's no substitute for the wow factor of a colorful nebula or galaxy. A great starter camera is the ZWO294MC Pro one-shot color camera. If your budget can afford it, a ZWO2600MC Pro or 183MC Pro are better cameras. Pro versions include a cooler, which really helps to minimize pixel noise. Filters. For nebula, I like using the Optolong L Enhanced Filter. It does a great job with emission and planetary nebulas without blocking too much light from the city. For blocking city light pollution on broadband targets, the Optolong L Pro is a great choice for broadband objects like galaxies, globs, open clusters, and reflection nebula. There are good similar filters from other suppliers too. What I like about the Optolong filters is I can swap one for the other without focus being affected. 
during a live presentation. If you swap filters from different suppliers, it's likely you'll have to stop and refocus each time. For cabling, you'll have to have a USB 3 cable to connect your camera to your laptop and an HDMI or other video cable to connect your laptop to your TV monitor. And of course, you'll also need standard power cables for the mount, PC, television, and possibly the camera. You need a laptop that can run your imaging software. If you use SharpCap, like I recommend, you'll need to use a PC or else emulate a PC on a Mac. For capture software, I like SharpCap Pro. For the modest cost of 12 pounds per year, it does a great job of capturing the video signal, allowing for camera control and image manipulation. It supports live stacking and other features too. Another option of using GWO cameras is ASI Studio. With stacking, the software integrates each new picture with all the ones that came before, looking for where there's signal and where there's noise. In doing so, it improves signal to noise and the longer you look at an object with a telescope, the more detail, the more contrast, the darker the background, the more dust lanes, the more filamentary nebula detail you will see. So stacking is a great thing for live presentations. You'll also need a TV monitor and stand if you want to show your images to a larger group. Inexpensive options abound on Amazon. I look for a low power version of a television to conserve battery. Mine's a 27 inch, which works well for groups up to about 30 people. For a power supply, you need to bring something like that along. If you're using a television, you'll need AC power as well. As long as your laptop has a charged battery, it's generally good enough to last for one EAA session. So one of the things you want to do when you're aligning is to be sure that the star is in the center of the field. So what I've done is I've used SharpCap to put a reticule grid on the screen and I'm going to tease Sirius over here, hopefully as close as I can to the center, and then lock it in. One of the advantages of using a camera as opposed to doing it manually with an eyepiece. So I'm going to call that good, align it, and now we're aligned successfully. So now we're going to use the Batten-Off mask to check focus. We'll go under Tools, and Focus Assistant, and select Batten-Off mask. Now I'm going to get a number here, which if it's closest to zero, you're most in focus. Actually, we're really good right here. It's really difficult to get less than about 0.5 because of seeing variations. Now you notice that it's staying just a bit above zero. So I'm going to try making a small fine focus adjustment and see if that makes it worse or better. This is actually pretty good. I'm going to call that good. So all I do now is I turn off, move the batten off mask and we should have a clear view of the star. Just coming off. Now this is extremely magnified. So I'll take the zoom back down to normal level. And there's the star. So here's an example of EAA with the Rosette Nebula. I've got the exposure set for 32 seconds. I've got gain set at zero. I'm using a ZWO 2600 MC Pro camera. I've got the thermal control set for minus 15. And the real trick here is getting the histogram set correctly. You'll notice if I make even tiny adjustments in these sliders, it has a big impact on how the picture looks. Dim, dim, dim. Bring this up a little brighter, a little brighter. That's beautiful. Now I can hide these screens and now we've got a beautiful image to share with the crowd. You can see a spectacular level of detail in the nebula already, only with a couple of minutes of exposures. You can see the dust lanes here caused by dark nebulas and a lot of structure in the outer envelope, 
as well as, of course, the major star cluster in the center, NGC 2244. So this shows you the power of EAA and how you can get a really beautiful image in a really short period of time. And again, if I look back here, we only have eight uh, frames stacked, 4 minutes, 16 seconds worth of data, and it's already a beautiful full color image. Here are some final tips. Sort objects by area of sky to minimize go-to time. Be prepared with answers to common questions. What is it? How far away is it? Any special features? Have a green laser to point out where you're showing the scope, identifying constellations, and any passing satellites. Show wider spaced multiple stars like Mizar and Alberio. Don't assume guests have prior astronomy knowledge. For example, explain that a light year is the distance light travels in a year, about 6 trillion miles. Check heavens-above.com for any ISS flyovers that evening. It's very impressive when you can predict when and where the ISS will appear and encourage your guests to wave to the astronauts. Encourage questions and interaction, and above all, have fun.